Alrighty, so here's my solution for this week's modeling challenge. So let's just go ahead, we'll start by deleting everything. And funnily enough, we're actually going to bring in an icosphere, which might seem a little bit strange, but I promise this works. Uh, and so we'll just bump the subdivisions up to three here. And when I was initially mucking around with this, I thought that the solution was going to be, uh, you know, using Control Shift and B and beveling all the vertexes or vertices um, to get the circle shapes. That's not going to work, funnily enough. It just doesn't resolve nicely. Uh, we could force it to work technically with the solution I provide here, but I, don't, I think this is a much better way of doing it. So instead, let's just go Control B. So we'll just bevel everything. I'm just going to hit Enter at an arbitrary point um, just to make the bevel shapes a little bit more even. Uh, instead of using offset, let's go use percent. And then I'm just going to drag this up to a value near 30%. So not quite 30, but just close to. So like 29.2 is just what I've landed on here. Um, and so then what we want to do, let's go ahead, select one of these hexagon faces. And then let's go find one of these pentagon faces like this. Go Shift G and select everything by a similar set of area. So now we've selected uh, all of the pentagons and hexagons. All I want to do with that is just press I to do an inset. We'll just bring those all in a little bit. So just somewhere around there. You know, Shift E, 0.33. So just add a very loose sort of crease on everything. And then I'm just going to go ahead, delete all the faces. So now i got this shape going on. So I'm just going to go ahead, shade smooth. And we want to turn all of these hexagons and pentagons into circles. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and slap on a subdivision surface modifier. And I'm just going to apply it. Just apply it at one level of subdivision. And so now I've turned all of those into uh, circles. So the next thing we need to do is we need to add a little bit of thickness to the shape. Uh, so to easily do that, let's get a solidify modifier and we can just crank up the thickness a bit. So something like that looks nice. Um, but as I said, this needs to be able to subdivide nicely, right? So let's go ahead and let's get another subdivision surface modifier. So it might lag just a little bit here, but that's all right. Let's just bump this up to three subdivisions here, right? Um, and so I expect that most of you probably got this far. Like, this makes sense to get here, right? Uh, but the problem is this does not currently subdivide nicely. So if I just go change the map cap to something a little bit harsher here, notice the shading on the outside. Like, it it pinches in the center of everything. And, well, I mean, it makes sense because we've got... Um, we've got these poles and uh, these quads around that pole that have been formed from the triangle. So, you know, it makes complete sense that we have that. Um, but it doesn't subdivide nicely at the moment, so it's a bit problematic. So what I want to do is let's go Shift A, let's bring in a cube, and I want to slap on a subdivision surface modifier here, and we're going to bump the levels up to four, and then Control A to apply it. Uh, then in Edit Mode, I'm going to use Alt, Shift, and S, and 1 to spherize it, so now it's more spherical. And then I'm just going to Shade Smooth. And then I'm just going to press S and scale this up a bit. I'm just going to scale it up just before it starts protruding onto the outer faces here, so you can see it's sort of pushing out too far. Bring it in, see how it's just nicely sitting on the inside of all of the circles there? So that's cool. I'm just going to press H to hide it because we don't need it. Um, and then on our icosphere, let's go add another modifier. Let's go to data transfer modifier. And so we're going to have the source be our cube. And then we want to come down to our face corner data, so enable that. We want to use custom normals, and as of right now, it's going to transfer all of the actual face normals, so this doesn't look nice. Uh, so let's change the mapping from nearest corner to nearest face interpolated. And it will take a second. So now we've got nice smooth shading over everything, but it's smoothed out way too much. Like this, this does not work, right? Uh, so what I want you to do is let's go back into edit mode really quickly. In edge select mode, just select one of your creased edges. So, select that one there. You use Shift and G, and let's go ahead and select similar creases. Then in our data tab here, let's just go to the vertex group. Let's add a new vertex group and assign it to all of the selected creases. Come back out into object mode. It's probably lagging a bit for you, but that's all right. That's kind of to be expected with this. Uh, what we want to do is in our vertex group for our data transfer, select our group. And this won't actually do anything immediately, so you can see it's changed the shading a little bit, but it still doesn't look right. What I want you to do is just hit this invert. 
And now what it's going to do is it's going to apply the data transfer to everything but those inner edges. And now we have this nice shading uh, on our model. So there you go. It's, you know, you could call it a bit hacky or cheating or whatever you want, but it's ultimately just using the tool set that we have in Blender to correct our normals. Ultimately, the model still works all nicely, um, but it's just a nice way to be able to fix up our normals. It's not like we've modeled something that is completely incoherent um, and then just going, ah, well, you know, bugger it, can't be bothered <laughs> trying to fix it up, let's just slap this in over the top. The model does technically make sense. It is all actually quad-based. Um, it's just very hard to clean up a bunch of these poles on a uh, on a spherical surface. You know, you can go ahead, do it manually, adjust everything with Alt-S and, and scaling and what have you, uh, but that just seems tedious. One other thing that I have no doubt people might ask me about here is that the shading on the inside isn't actually that nice. Uh, so if I recall correctly, what we can do is in our Solidify, if we go to the Output Vertex group in the shell here, we can just select Group. Um, because the shading doesn't look that nice, like you get that weird distortion around the edges. And this sort of helps the shading on the interior a little bit, um, though you do have like that hex pattern going on on the inside. So it's kind of, you know, choose your poison sort of situation. Um, we could always, you know, go ahead, apply this, and then do a shrink wrap to a, a sphere uh, to clean up the shape of everything. For the sake of brevity, I'm just going to ignore it. It's uh, I don't think it's all too important how the inside of the of the shading of this thing looks. So I might just turn that back off because I kind of feel like it looks a little bit nicer even though it's not perfect on the inside uh, looking like this. But yeah, there you go, guys. That's the solution to it. I know this looks a little bit complicated, but it's a, it's, it's a relatively simple solution in the end. And I'll be looking forward to seeing everybody's submissions for their challenges next week.